Dear Strength by David Tenson Why have you not returned to me, my strength? I need you back for good, my strength. But you only visit on occasion. Why? What are you doing, my strength? I had plans for us, my strength. But you stood me up again. Why? We used to do so much together, my strength. We made so much work, my strength. We were esteemed by so many. Remember? I've been with weakness for ages now, it seems. Sure, she's gentle and present, but that's what's so frustrating. Recently, wisdom told me that it's weakness's turn, that you won't return till weakness can stay. Is that true, my strength? Wisdom says I should accept weakness with all her qualities. That weakness is needed for wholeness, and I can't keep ignoring her beauty. My strength, I need a favour. In your stead, can you send someone else? Could you let courage know that I need her for one thing? Wisdom tells me I need courage to make weakness my weakness, because those who embrace their weakness are indeed the most courageous. Please, my strength, hurry. And get patience ready too. I have a feeling she'll be needed next. When strength is esteemed in a culture, weakness and anything attributed to it loses its voice and value. And this, friends, is tragic. You take depression, for example, burnout, maybe anxiety. It's one of the world's biggest killers, depression is. And it's seldom addressed or talked about in the public space. Despite good education regarding its origins in biology and trauma, etc., it's generally seen as a weakness. Count the number of honest confessions of struggle with depression in your Facebook feed this week, or your lunchroom, or your living room, or your church. You might get one discussion, maybe out of a thousand, unless, of course, you work in a space like this, but for the most people, why is this? Why is it so rare? One of the reasons, I believe, is the idolization of strength in our culture, even in Christian culture. When one idol is erected, its its opposite is often buried, buried away beneath the ground, deep in the soil of shame, covered by nice green grass. You know, that fertilized bullshit grass that's greener on the other side. We talk about the importance of a balanced life, especially in Western societies, but I don't know if there's <laughs> such a thing, is there? We even quote success and strength scriptures like Philippians 3.10, that I may know him in the power of, power of his resurrection, which is only half, right? The rest of that verse will mumble in the fellowship of his sufferings and being conformed into his death. I think it's time this idol of strength is put in its place, off the pedestal, off its totem pole alongside the Rambo Superman Jesus one that we've built for God. People talk about a a desire for revival, for transformation. They want love. They want to be connected. They want to be vulnerable and honest. And they'll even watch copious Brene Brown (laughs) videos and These are great, but let's be honest. The truth that will set you free may be the truth about ourselves, our frail, beautiful, strong, weak, average, crazy, unpredictable, doubting, lovely selves. 
the self Christ lives in, the resurrection and suffering Christ. And so I wrote this poem actually um, in consideration of a number of people that I know that are currently going through um, a hard time of burnout, of depression. And, uh, and I know that through periods I have faced the same or similar things, and, and I, I dare say the same because our stories and our cases are all so different, but we can at least say that we know what it's like to lose our strength <laughs> and be faced with the gentle presence of weakness. And who wants to live in a society, right, that is esteems weakness? I don't know if it should be an either-or thing. And I know our humanity is drawn towards heroic events and having victory, because who wants to be the suffering servant, the suffering traumatized, downtrodden, whatever other name you want to attribute to somebody who's lost their strength. And so in this piece, I'm really working in personifying strength because it's kind of like this when strength leaves us, right? We feel like strength is gone. And wisdom comes to us and wisdom tells us that we have to fight the battle of pushing away weakness and actually embracing her as our own. Now, sometimes this doesn't happen till kind of a lot of midlife crises, they might be labeled, where our we have mistaken, we have mistaken our ego as our strength. The Hebrews had a great um, kind of philosophy behind the decades of life, and they said your 30s are for strength and your 40s are for understanding. If I've got this right, I remember speaking to a Chinese friend and she told me that even in Confucianism, your 40s are the decades where the puzzle pieces come together and things start to make sense and add up. And one of the things I think adds up to us and for us and comes as a gift is that we must learn to live with weakness. And unless we make weakness our weakness, we're going to be battling for strength and a losing battle. And again, I think it's cultural. I think it's social. I think it's unfortunately crept into some of the narratives of the gospel and tainted Jesus as this Superman guy who will deliver us from all suffering immediately. And I can't tell you the number of people in my, you know, that have come as clients into my prayer ministry room and counseling with Natalie, even just close friends and people I meet in workplaces and, and, and a large part of their frustration. They're actually not battling anything more bigger than a mentality that I shouldn't be weak and I should be better now and my strength should have returned. Man. And the moment they yield themselves and the moment they realize that weakness, this thing called weakness, must become their own and they must embrace it like the resurrection life and the fellowship of sufferings, they, the moment they yield to that is the moment the, the journey of wholeness and healing and recovery takes a radical turn for the better. And this is why I kind of personify in this piece a battle with weakness, <laughs> a frustration. Sure, she's gentle and present, it says, but that's what's so frustrating. Because you and strength used to do so much. You did so much good together. You were esteemed together. How often do we hear 
about somebody's weakness and a slow progression out of, say, a negative 10 weakness to a negative 8. Even though it's progress, it doesn't look as good as that instant thing and that instant strength. And here we have on the cross, between two thieves, God in Jesus Christ, reconciling the whole world to himself as the suffering servant. I shared in the piece about the rescuer, the importance of understanding kenosis as a self-emptying aspect of our life. And when strength leaves us, that is part of our growth. I can't help but think, even as I reflect on this, the story of the woman with the issue of blood who touches Jesus, the hem of his garment. She's tried so much and she touches his, the hem of his garment. His prayer tassels that thing that he holds on to as he prays every day. And she reaches in and he says, why has my strength? He knows his strength has left him. And she's healed. And she's not shamed, but she's upheld. And she goes on to do great things. And so I introduce wisdom into this piece, a little like the voice of wisdom that I think comes to us as a divine gift, as God himself. And I have personified strength and weakness and courage as feminine this, in this because, man, we are so often presented strength or weakness or courage or patience as masculine. And I think it's neither or, it's both and more. And so with uh, joy and intentionality, I cast all of these attributes as feminine. Recently, it says, wisdom told me that it's weakness's turn, that you won't return till weakness can stay. Is that true, my strength? Wisdom says I should accept weakness and all her qualities, that weakness is needed for wholeness, and I can't igno keep ignoring her beauty. I think that if we embrace the fall and the recovery of the fall really well, then we will save ourselves from going through the same thing again, because it's not like strength will leave and weakness will come. It's that we learn to live with weakness and, and, and we learn that we need more than weakness. We need courage and we need patience so that our strength will return. There is this gorgeous quote by Julian of Norwich. She says, first there is the fall, and then we recover from the fall. Both are the mercy of God. Both are the mercy of God. When strength leaves us and weakness comes, I believe it's the mercy of God. When courage comes, it's the mercy. When patience comes, it's the mercy. And I think a whole life is one that knows how to hold all these things in tension, utilize what needs to be utilized, but not discard and not idolize one over the other. And maybe the question to you today is, what place does weakness have in your life? Can you call weakness my weakness? Can you embrace her, her kindness and her gentleness? Can you embrace her presence? Or are you actually spending more and more unnecessary energy on trying to get weakness out so that strength will return? Is the battle that you or a loved one facing actually not a battle against weakness, but a battle against pride, or a battle against shame, the shame of not being strong, the shame of being seen as weak. When you read in Matthew 5, as part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, that blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God, does that resonate with you? Can you relate to that? Is that others or is that you? If strength leaves you 
have you failed? See, there are so many lies that we've believed. What lies have you believed about weakness? What lies have you believed about not recovering quickly? What lies have you believed about the role of weakness in your life? There are some things that we can all consider and continue to consider because we live in a culture that esteems the image of strength. Strong muscles, strong bones, a strong company, a strong family. And in its esteeming, we tend to exclude and shame. And weakness has a more than important place in our life, if, in fact, we want to be whole. Because if all we have is strength, if all we are is the rich, young ruler, then how can we inherit eternal life? Because all you have is at the top. You're young, you're rich, you're in charge. And you haven't experienced the blessing of descent, the blessing of contrast. And that's what weakness allows us to do, is experience eternal life on the same spectrum that God did in Jesus Christ and understand that we are fully human. So with that, I want to read this piece again. Dear Strength, Why have you not returned to me, my strength? I need you back for good, my strength. But you only visit on occasion. Why? What are you doing, my strength? I had plans for us, my strength, but you stood me up again. Why? We used to do so much together, my strength. We made so much work, my strength. We were esteemed by so many. Remember? I've been with weakness for ages now, it seems. Sure, she's gentle and present, but that's what's so frustrating. Recently. Wisdom told me it's weakness's turn, that you won't return till weakness can stay. Is that true, my strength? Wisdom says I should accept weakness and all her qualities, that weakness is needed for wholeness, and I can't keep ignoring her beauty. My strength, I need a favor. In your stead, can you send someone else? Could you let courage know that I need her for one thing? Wisdom tells me I need courage to make weakness my weakness. Because those who embrace their weakness are indeed the most courageous. Please, my strength, hurry and get patience ready too. I feel that she'll be needed next. Thanks for listening to this podcast. It's available on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, davidtenson.com, and also on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash leaderheart, where you can find more stuff and support us through a monthly donation. If you are listening to this on iTunes, I would really appreciate a rating and a review. It would really help get the word out there. Till next time, shalom.